Alright, in this Bleeding Edge video, we're going to go over my Bleeding Edge tech stack for 2025. I'm already thinking about 2025. I'm literally nine years ahead of you. Um, okay, anyways, what we're going to do, this stack, the one that I've determined, is perfect for if you just want to test out an app, if you want to throw something up there and, and do a proof of concept, or if you want to scale to 100,000 users or whatever, you know, once you're making a million bucks a month, then you might want to reassess. But for just getting started and especially working with clients or anything like that, this is the perfect stack, okay? Um, I do recommend watching this video a little bit faster because I tend to talk s s uh, slowly. Uh, but yeah, it'll just help my watch time and... Uh... <laughs> alright, alright, let's go. And if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you actually care about having a good user experience not just whichever option is the cheapest, because if we wanted to have the cheapest way to host ever, we would all just go to Linode or fucking uh, whatever, one of those hosting platforms that no one talks about anymore, and you would put up a virtual server for $2 a month, and you would, you know, scale your app to a million users, but that would fucking blow, so instead you use an actual product like this, which tries to do a lot of the work for you. So we have essentially four different options here. We have Render, we have Vercel, Fly.io, and Railway. These are kind of the most like most forward-thinking tools for deploying your front end, okay? Because I don't know if I said that, but that's what we're going to need to be starting out with. And so the thing with Render is, I talked about this a little bit in my video yesterday, but if we go to Deploy an Instance, I'm just going to copy this... Um, this uh, repo and let's just try to try to create a new svelte kit app okay so we'll go new web service we'll put in this public git repo and then we'll go down to the plans and the minimum price plan is seven dollars and now if you're deploying a database and let's just say you have a database and then you have some sort of like back-end container that you're gonna be running that's already twenty one dollars per month that's the same as the Vercel pro plan and that's only one, like, project, basically. So, yeah, their pricing's pretty high. And I also want to say something. Actually, I'll say that in a minute about the, the reviews of these platforms. But, yeah, the, the free plan is really just fucked on this. And if we go back to this project, I have this FeltKit app up here. And as I demonstrated yesterday, let's, uh, let's spin this up, shall we? Now, one caveat here is that with a free plan, you do get a slow cold start. So... Let's just see how slow it is. Hopefully you're watching this video sped up. So the weather's kind of nice, I guess. Ah, it's, it's already dark out. It's like 7.30. I'm just trying to make conversation, you know. Oh, there we go. And now my app is ready. So that was what? A cold start of nine years? I mean, this is the most ridiculous cold start I've ever seen. It really is just for like a proof of concept. And you definitely want to make sure to get that server started before you go to uh, demo it to someone. Because otherwise, you're going to be making awkward conversation like I just did. You know, talk about the weather while you wait for your fucking container to spin up. So, yeah, I mean, Render, I like the UX, it's cool, it's nice, but the pricing is just, doesn't really make sense, it's kind of annoying, and, yeah, I mean, there's better options out there. So, let's cross it, cross it off the list for now. Then we have Fly.io. Fly is a platform, I do like it, I was looking at the, um, I, I deployed an app on here already, and the problem is, it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass, like, Okay, here's a cold start. So as we can see, this machine is shut off. So the machines are stopped. But if we go to this URL, bro, fucking what? Like probably less than a second cold start. Like that's pretty fucking good. Um, and it's just a Svelte app. But my problem was Svelte on fly. When I go to depl deploy this Svelte app, it tells you all this stuff. It tells you, yeah, you have to run this, run that. But what it doesn't tell you is you have to change this one line in the config. Like, they don't tell you about secrets. And secrets are separate from deployment and separate from development because it's a Docker container, which dockerizes your app. 
and it doesn't actually use your secrets from your end file. It's super fucked, so I kept getting a failure, and it took me, like, over an hour to figure out how the fuck to do it, and now my secrets are just, like, basically public, so it's super fucked. I mean, with Fly, like, I would have hoped they would address it, and yeah, I just kind of had a really bad experience trying to deploy my app. Um, the pricing's good, it's completely pay-as-you-go, and I think Fly's still a strong option. You know, the, originally, the, the, the reason I chose it was because they have Postgres, Object Storage, and Redis all in one place, as well as, you know, your front end. But the problem with this this Postgres is, um, if we go learn about it, this is not actually a managed Postgres server, which just means more work. It means, like, instead of getting to build your app and deploy to users and talk to people and do cool shit, you're sitting there like, oh, no, why is my connection limit reached and my queries are getting fucked like do you really want to be doing that i don't so fuck that basically fly it's a cool platform but fuck that railway railway may have to be second honestly i think that i think that railway is a really good setup because if we actually go to the plan page you can basically share a plan throughout your whole organization which makes sense this is like vercel or any of these other platforms we'll talk about where you upgrade your 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 organization plan and it applies to all of your projects. And this is what I would actually use if, I guess, if Vercel wasn't a thing and if I wanted to spin up, like, containers. I may end up using Railway occasionally just for, like, persistent uh, or stateful servers. But, yeah, I mean, at the moment, um, I ran out of my trial credits and there's literally no free plan after that. So I have to pay $5 a month, which I'm not complaining about $5 a month, but I'm saying, like, I'm... It's just kind of pointless, you know? Um, so, yeah, Railway, Railway is a great platform. Uh, but I do want to show you something. So, let's just go over to Trustpilot. And I want to show you something interesting. So, if we go to fly.io, I released a video on this yesterday. And then I started looking at reviews. And they were so negative. Look at this. 2.8 stars. I mean, half the reviews are fit, are one-star reviews. Blah, 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 they fucking scammed me, blah, 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 stay away from them, you know, I got nuked. Very negative. But the funny thing is, okay, here we go, alright, look at this, Heroku, 1.7 stars, we go to Railway, 2.2, <laughs> Render, 2.2, and Vercel is 2.2. So all of these companies have absolutely garbage ratings. I mean, the only, I I'm surprised DigitalOcean is actually killing it. But yeah, I mean, like, all these all these hosting platforms just get absolutely fucking raked through the mud. So, yeah, I don't think the reviews are really a strong thing to go off of. Other than that, maybe DigitalOcean is goaded. But, um, yeah, I'm not trying to sit there in their fucking annoying SUI. So, anyways, that's Render. My actual choice, as you could probably figure out at this point, is Vercel. I mean... It pisses me off. I can't go to the landing page unless I open up an incognito tab. But yeah, I mean, Vercel is just goaded. The cool thing about Vercel is they have this, they have the um, pro plan, which applies to your whole organization. You can have unlimited projects under this. And then I can just spin up uh, an app whenever I want for basically zero additional charge. And the cool thing is I can create a project in my uh, organization, and then if I want to give it, hand it off to a client, I can just transfer ownership. So it's super easy to do that, and that's kind of a requirement when it comes on to actually selling things that you develop, as well as Vercel's just super easy to scale. I mean, I think Railway scales, you know, automatically can ho horizontally scale, but with um, Vercel, it's all built in. It's super fucking easy. And if you use Next.js, which most people do, I don't know why I'm trying to, like, explain this to you, because everyone fucking uses Vercel. Um, it's just goaded, but, oh yeah, and then the other thing is, there is some times where you just want to spin up a basic API, like this has happened to me a couple times in the last day where I'm like, damn, I just want to spin up an API, I don't want to pay five bucks a month just to use this API like ten times on Railway or whatever, and then I realized you can just host an Express app on Vercel, so that's what I'm going to do next time, if I ever need like a stateless server, which... I don't need a stateful server for basically anything. If I just need a stateless server, I'm just going to spin up an app on Vercel and be done with it, you know? So Vercel, very easy, very fast to get started. So front end, yes, Vercel is goaded. Railway or render might be okay. 
Um, what did we learn, though? We learned DigitalOcean has best reviews. But, dude, uh, DigitalOcean just... It's so annoying. Like, it's just... You can tell it's not a company from, like, post-pandemic because all these, like, newer companies have bitchin' websites and the UX is just spot on. And that's really what we... That's really what we want as devs. We just want to, like, build shit and not have to fuck around with servers and all this gay-ass shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, front-end, Vercel is the GOAT. Now we come on to back-end, all right? So back-end, I'm going to say, is your database and sort of things were, were, uh, around your database. And for this, I use Supabase. Supabase is fucking cherry, dude. Like, um... So there's a lot of different alternatives in this space. I mean, we have like Firebase. We have, um, uh, honestly, I haven't really looked at the other ones. But the cool thing about Supabase is, all right, first of all, it's open source and Postgres so that if you ever need to migrate, you can just migrate right off. But it also comes with all these other things so you don't have to go spend money and try to figure out where to use these other platforms. So you get... Your Postgres database, as well as authentication, I've used this. Edge functions, I've used this. Storage, like S3 buckets, I've used this. Real time, I don't know what this is, but it looks cool. Vector databases, this is extremely helpful when you're building like RAG systems and um, shit with AI. And it's all accessible via an API. Like that's the beautiful thing because if you've ever used a pure Postgres database, which Occasionally, I might, right? You can go to um, storage in Vercel and you can spin up a Postgres database. But you, you're, you're going to be either, you have to set up like Prisma or something, or you're going to be just writing pure Postgres, which fucking blows, or pure SQ, SQL, which fucking blows. With Supabase, they have an amazing API. I mean, their API is fucking great, especially in JavaScript. And it's just easy to use. And if I go to the dashboard, we have my organization and i have all my clients i can view them on the same account same thing as like vercel and our last option and then all these if i go to my um my my settings i'm on the pro plan for this and so i get all my projects under the same plan i mean they cost a little bit more but if i'm spinning up an actual database i'm okay with spending a little bit more you know um superbase is just fucking awesome and again like all of these options come down to just being the easiest way to get shit up and running and, and start building, you know? Um, I think, especially like today with AI, it's super important to be able to iterate quickly and build quickly and like move fast. And if you're spending all your time fucking like, you know, how do I fix this Postgres error or how do I like set up my auth? You're, you're, fall, you're losing, you're, you're falling behind, you're losing, you know what I mean? So anyways, Superbase is goaded. If you need something simple, a Vercel database is fine. And you know, it's basically included in your Vercel plan, super cheap, but I definitely recommend Superbase. Now we go into workflow. So workflow, I think this is almost like a newer thing. I mean, people used to use kind of stateful servers with no timeout where they could just run like a long running process. But the issue with that is you get very bad logging. You don't actually know what's going on when there's real errors to address and you don't get any of these kind of features that you want, like inimpotency or automatic retries or timeouts, like things are actually important. And so what I use for this is trigger.dev and trigger.dev I've talked about a fair amount on this channel and that's because it's the best. I mean, I've tried NAN, Zapier, Make on the no code side. And then on the code side, I've looked at all these alternatives, like, I, you know, running, building my own express server. And then like all the alternatives to trigger, because when I was getting started, I couldn't figure it out. And sometimes there's like reliability issues because it's a, it's a young company and it's a very technically kind of technologically difficult uh, product. But at the end of the day, trigger just blows everything else out of the water. There's literally nothing that compares to it. And let me just show you, maybe I can show you kind of what it looks like. So um, you can see they basically say it's good for all these different tasks. Um, if we go to a project, actually, I'll just show you my, my call summaries app. So um, this app, I actually use trigger for it to make quite a bit of money. Another thing about 
trigger is all my projects are under the same organization, which is a pro plan. And so I pay one, you know, fee to, pr to manage all of my projects. I can spin up another one just like that. So it's extremely good pricing. You notice a theme with this pricing is it's primarily usage based, except for Vercel, where on the pro plan they charge per seat, which pisses me off. But yeah, I mean, in general, it's just per seat or it's a pricing based on usage. And so the cool thing about trigger is if we go into one of these tasks that failed, we can actually see exactly what the error was. And we can see, okay, we couldn't fetch the call duration. And after 10 attempts, well, I fucked something up in the code. And so it's not working. So what we can do is, all right, boom. So that worked. So it actually, oh no, wait. All right, so I kind of fucked myself over because um, I added this this note. Basically, it's updating a note in a CRM whenever the call recording uh, fails. And I meant to do it only on the last one, but I, I fucked it up. So it, uh, <laughs> it put, uh, put 10 note entries for this guy just because it's not public. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to debug how fucking easy it is to debug shit in... Um, in trigger. So all we're going to do is change into this directory and we'll run npx trigger dev at latest dev. That might be the worst thing about trigger, dude. It takes so long to type that shit out, but we're spinning up the develop environment and then we'll just hit replay run. And this will give us the context. So I'm just going to copy that. Actually, I'm just going to select dev and I'm going to hit replay run with this new code that I just updated. And we should see, okay, so we see attempt number one, max attempts is null. All right, so I'm just going to update it so that if the number of attempts, if the, att the current attempt is the same as the maximum amount of attempts, which means it's the last attempt, then I'm just going to create a note and leave it be. So that's as that's how e fucking easy it is to debug in trigger.dev. And then I'm just going to do npx trigger.dev at latest deploy. And it's going to bundle everything up and deploy for me. What the fuck? What? All right, let me try again. Deploy. All right, something's fucked up with my cursor. So... That's how easy it is to use Trigger. I mean, I've looked for alternatives. Trigger is goaded though. And um, yeah, overall, this is my tech stack. It's, as you can see, it's focused on ease of use. I wanna be building shit, I wanna be coding, I wanna be solving problems, providing value, and not fucking dealing with servers or this gay ass shit that some like fucking people pride themselves. You know, if you go to Reddit, Everyone's going to be like, bro, just get a fucking droplet on DigitalOcean. Fuck you. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you for watching the video. By the way, if you're a builder, if you're if you're an entrepreneur, if you're uh, making money online, I have a private community for specifically people like you. And you can re request access below. It's free, but you do have to be, uh, you're going to be screened. If you're not cool, forget it. So anyways, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.